lovers of whiskey, watchers of YouTube, I'm the malt activist, but I thought you already knew. Today we take a trip to Campbelltown. It's a place with a lot of whiskey around. There's Glen Gile and then there's Springbank. Only problem is nothing rhymes with Glen Scotia. So thank you for tuning in and welcome to another episode of Malt Activist Tells You What To Do. No, that's not right. That's very bad. Today, we're going to talk about Cameltown whiskeys. Um, so this is what happened. You know, uh, a week uh, a week or so ago, I, I put out a video, which was my top 10 whiskeys under 50, then my top 10 whiskeys between 50 and 100, and so on and so forth. And a lot of the comments started piling up saying, bro, where's Springbank? And I was like, oh shit, you're right. And then someone said, what about Long Row? And I was like, whoa, I didn't even include Long Row? And those two are my favorite whiskeys. So that got me thinking. I was like, there's no way I would have missed out on like a Springbank 12 cast strength or a, you know, a, a peated Long Row or a Long Row CV or a Long Row 18. So I went back. I went back to all the online retailers that I was doing my research on. And then I realized something. All these whiskeys are out of stock. They're not available online right now. Does anyone know what's happening? If you have any clue, please tell me and put it down in the comments below so that I know. Because right now, if you go look for our Springbank or a Long Row or a Hazelburn, it's not there. There's absolutely nothing there on the website. And that's how I missed it. Like I would just search for whiskeys between 50 and 100 pounds and I would pick the ones that I thought were best, not realizing that I'm leaving out Springbank. Even uh, even Kilcarran. Can you believe that? So yeah, so um, egregious, egregious um, uh, error of judgment in my part for not including those in my top 10 uh, for both the videos and they should have been there. But I think I think it was uh, it was an accident that sort of casts uh, a, a light on something new and much much bigger, which is where the hell are all these Campbelltown whiskeys? Why can't we find them online anymore? If you know something that I don't, please leave it in the comments below so that we can find out what's going on. Okay, now that we've moved down from DefCon 4, let's talk about Campbelltown whiskeys. And here am I. Well. There's only five brands of whiskeys in Campbelltown. So these are my top five off the five brands of whiskeys that you can find in Campbelltown. Now Campbelltown has only three distilleries. It has Springbank, it has Glengyle, and it has Glen Scotia. Now let's start with Glen Scotia. Glen Scotia was founded in 1832 and like almost every single distillery in that era and in that region, it was mothballed thanks to economic downturn. And so it lay dormant for a very long time until the Loch Lomond Group, which also owns the Loch Lomond Distillery, bought it in 2014 and when they, uh, you know, um, uh, increased the capacity, production capacity, uh, built a new visitor center and basically overall the entire operations and started producing a new batch of Glen Scotia distillate. Now I've done a video where I go through about four Glen Scotia whiskeys. Um, some of them good, some of them not so good. Um, I'll link it up here now. However, the one that I think I want to talk to you about today or, or just uh, uh, show you is the Victoriana. This is their cost strength version at 54.2%. However, slightly better than this, in my opinion, is the 15 year old Glen Scotia, which is also excellent. Unfortunately, I don't have a bottle to show you right now, but in my video, you will see that I kind of uh, prefer that over uh, the other ones. However, the Victoriana at cost strength is also not a bad dram. I didn't have a lot of good things to say about it during that video. Uh, but since then, it's kind of opened up and uh, I think I've changed my mind about this whiskey. It, I think it's not as bad as I 
thought it was. Uh, it's quite decent. However, uh, my pick is still the Glen Scotia 15. So if you're looking to get into Campbelltown whiskeys and want to start off um, with Glen Scotia, I would recommend the 15 year old. We now move on to Glen Guile Distillery, one of my favorite distilleries in the whole world because they produce Kilcarran. Kilcarran is a great uh, whiskey. It's uh, it's something that I got introduced to maybe maybe eight eight nine years ago uh, when they were doing their work in progress series, and I picked up a bottle without really knowing what it was, and I think I picked up a double uh, work in progress for which is matured in bourbon barrels and it was absolutely stunning. Very young whiskey at that time. And essentially what they were doing is that they were gearing up to hit the 12 year old mark, which you will see here like this. During that time, they produced the WIP six and the seven and the seven cost strength bourbon is still one of my absolute favorite whiskeys to have ever drunk. And if you can find a bottle of that and I'm pretty sure it's very hard to find, uh, but do, if you can, find it and, and, and buy it and drink it because it's absolutely amazing. So what you probably don't know is that uh, the Mitchell family, which owns Springbank, which we're going to talk about next, used to own uh, Glen Gyle, Glen Gyle Distillery. And then, uh, and then they sort of had a falling out and then that distillery also shut down and then it got sold off to somebody else and then that was it. But then... In 2004, the Mitchell family, which owns Springbank, rebought uh, the Glen Gyle Distillery and put it back into production and started making Kilcarran spirit. Now, interestingly, they can't call their spirit Glen Gyle because Loch Lomond, for some reason, has a vatted malt called Glen Gyle. I'm sure there's a reason for it. I just don't know what it is. But yes, so Loch Lomond actually has a vatted malt called uh, called Glen Gyle, and which is why the Glen Gyle Distillery can't produce a spirit and call it Glen Gyle. So they have to call it Kilcarran. And Kilcarran, I think, comes from the name of the settlement where St. Kieran is believed to have had a religious cell and where modern Campbelltown stands today. So there you go, a little bit of history uh, on what Kilcarran stands for. Again, one of my favorite whiskeys, uh, very uh, smoky, uh, diesel oil, uh, salty, uh, with a hint of sweetness. Uh, definitely the Kilcarran 12, very, very affordable as well. Uh, if you can find it, uh, please, yeah, find it, buy it, drink it. And now we come to the king, the king of whiskey making in Campbelltown, which is Springbank Distilleries. And I cannot, I cannot praise that distillery enough because they are absolute geniuses. I love the spirit that comes out of that distillery. Two of my favorite whiskeys come from that distillery. If you're wondering how, let me tell you something. Springbank produces three expressions. The first one is called Hazelburn. Now, Hazelburn is made from unpeated barley. It is distilled three times and it has a much lighter, um, lighter uh, body, uh, sweeter, uh, and it comes out at a higher ABV because of the triple distillation, okay? I am personally not a big fan of Hazelburn whiskeys. I find them, well, uh, I don't like them for exactly the same reasons I just described them, which is um, uh, light, light body, thin bodied, uh, too sweet, uh, and uh, kind of just, I, I don't, I'm not into triple distilled stuff. Uh, that's good for vodka and everything. Um, no, but that's not true. I mean, there's some good triple whiskeys out there as well, uh, but I don't think uh, Hazelburn is doing a good job. So um, yes, but that's it. Uh, so Hazelburn, unpeated, triple distilled. Now, then what they do is once they've distilled the spirit for Hazelburn, they will take um, partly peated barley uh, and then they will mix that uh, and distill that. Uh, but what they'll do is they'll, they'll, uh, they'll take faints from the third uh, third distillation and mix it with the second distillation uh, and hence spring bank is lightly peated and distilled two and a half times That's right now. I I wish I had time in this video to explain to you exactly how that works But I'm not going to do that. It's just too, too long. It'll blow your mind Just know that it's distilled two and a half times and it's lightly peated and from that range I would highly recommend this 12 year old cast strength at 55.3%, it 
ABV. It is an absolute corker and I love it. It's one of my favorite whiskeys in the whole world. Uh, and yeah, um, find it, buy it, drink it. And last but not the least is Long Row. Also coming from the Springbank Distillery, distilled only two times and using heavily, heavily peated barley resulting in a much heavier whiskey, a much more oilier whiskey, a saltier whiskey, a peated whiskey, a smokier whiskey, and with a lot of uh, salted caramel and character. And I am the biggest fan of Long Row. Uh, it's just one of my favorite whiskeys in the whole world. And this particular one, as you can see, well worn out, is called the Long Row CV. And it's a mix of like three or four different types of maturations, three I think but uh, their 18 year old is absolutely amazing. There's so many others uh, that you wanna get your hand, ha uh, hands on. Uh, the long repeated is an absolute stunning dram as well. But again, you know, I'm now like super concerned because I've not been able to find them uh, online. So uh, dude, if, if you can, if you can find them, please let me know uh, what the hell is going on. I have no clue whatsoever. Yeah, so, so if you ever visit Campbelltown, you 100%, 100% have to visit all these three distilleries. It's a no-brainer. It's the quintessential. <laughs> it's the quintessential distillery visit. Um, I've personally not been to uh, Glen Scotia. However, I've had the pleasure of visiting Glengyle and have had uh, some lovely Kilcarens over there. They have an eight-year-old cost strength, which is, oh, which is absolutely bonkers. I think I've reviewed it. I think I have a bottle lying around here somewhere, but it's gonna take too long for me to find it. Uh, I think I have reviewed it. It is an absolute gorgeous whiskey. The Kilker and eight-year-old cost strength. Um, and then, yeah, Springbank. Everything about Springbank is so good, so amazing. Uh, and uh, such a high level of consistency in their in their spirits, both with Springbank and Long Row. And I've yet to taste a Springbank or a Long Row that I don't like. Mind you, the age statement Long Rows back in the day, oh, they're just so amazing. And you'll be lucky to find some uh, age statement Long Rows now. Uh, but yeah, and then of course, there's Springbank. And there's nothing I can say about Springbank that hasn't been said enough. So yes, there you go, you know. Um, uh, I'm glad I did this video. I'm really upset that I missed out uh, on my lists uh, because of this uh, shortage or I don't know what it is or this unavailability right now on the UK online retailers, uh, but there's something going on and I don't know what it is. And I think let's, let's you and I get to the bottom of this. Let's find out what the hell is happening, you know? So yeah, there you have it. These were my, these were my only five uh, whiskeys uh, expressions from uh, from uh, from Campbelltown that I think you should definitely try. Uh, but if you don't try anything else, you gotta try the Springbank, which I think is uh, an absolute magnificent dram and is uh, very very representative of Campbelltown, the the region. So yes, there you have it. Thank you, thank you for joining me for this video. I am the malt activist. Until next time, peace.